Welcome back to the Flashpoint Playoffs. We're still at Twickenham Stadium, but you might notice that something has changed. Indeed, we're not in the studio right now. As many of you may know, we have been operating in a bubble environment for all talent and crew here at Flashpoint 2 in order to comply with the government of the United Kingdom and their guidelines. Despite these conditions, we did have a handful of positive tests for COVID-19 in our final week of competition. We are planning to complete the tournament without further delays, and we look forward to bringing you a thrilling conclusion to our event. So hopefully we won't have any more delays in our matches, and you can expect some very exciting Counter-Strike as we head towards the finish and our million-dollar prize pool is distributed. Now, with that in mind, joining me today on our analyst segment are Thorin and Alan. So welcome. We are going to be diving into our winner's bracket match first, which will send one team to the grand finals and a guaranteed top two placement. And we have Virtus Pro and Fnatic. So let's start things out here by talking about Virtus Pro and looking through their gameplay, because I think it's unlikely that they would even be here. They were a dark horse, but certainly not one of our favorites to get top two guaranteed, are they? No, certainly not. And with teams like Fnatic, OG, and Big coming into this tournament, nobody would have actually picked VP, I think, to make it to this position of being in the upper bracket final. So from that perspective alone, it's very surprising. I think one aspect that really has come along is definitely their map pool and maps like Overpass and Vertigo have come along so far during this tournament alone. So they must have been practicing so hard throughout the group stages, that break week between groups and the playoffs. They must be going really hard at these sort of maps. So I've been very impressed by Vertis Pro and their map pool overall. Yeah, I think the key thing is the way the group stage ended, if you remember, was they got beaten in that deciding match by OG. So a lot of people, I was, I'm was, i a skeptic of them, probably thought, right, order's been restored. You know, they got a, a couple of nice wins, but that's it. But you can't actually deny what they've done in the tournament already. Like, they're already guaranteed top three as a finish, which is already well above expectations. And then add in, yeah, okay, they got like an easier first round upper bracket matchup against Mad Lions, but then they beat big, the number one ranked team in this tournament, number five ranked in the world by I hit on TV. So that's a very legitimate win. And, and that goes along with, as Alan says, the map pool developing. I think also you're seeing like the teething troubles of Yakinda perhaps start to get yes. figured out a little bit. Remember, he hasn't been this deep in big tournaments before. And I think even actually Jim, the notorious Jim, has started to come online a little bit more and it's getting more effective. So right now, VP looks the best they've looked, I would say, since last year at the major, actually, when they had obviously quite a little bit of a different composition. And Thorne, you've talked previously about, I know you've been frustrated by some of James' play, but on certain maps, uh, you've said that James' uh, kind of passivity works very well with Yakinder's aggression. Where has that kind of dual threat been the most effective? Well, what's good is actually a map that we're very likely to see at some point in today's matchup, if not as a pick, as a decider, is Inferno, of course, a map that both these teams like. And I think on that map particularly, they managed a very, very clever balance between the two because what they did effectively was just swap positions between Jim and between Yakinda on the CT side. So whereas if you think of how, if you think of Jim's POV on a map like Inferno, if he's on the banana, he's just going to hold the very corner of every angle and hit the first shot and then reposition back. And it makes it a nightmare to peek in him but your kinder in the same position is basically going to aggressively peek out and go for one two three kills try and take up ground so the problem is you're going to play it as the t side the opposite way against that style and so if they can correctly gamble which one to put there it basically short circuits your attack before you've even taken it because you can never be sure like how am i going to take this at this point in time it makes even the battle for utility on the banana very different yes. so i think that's a good example of where you can actually use the extreme ends of the spectrum that those two players are on as a massive boon to vert Pro. We'll have to see if Inferno gets selected in our map veto in just a few minutes. But first up, let's turn our attention now and discuss Fnatic, a team that we definitely thought had the potential to reach top three at this event. Favorites alongside teams like OG and Big. Big now, of course, eliminated yesterday by OG. But what about Fnatic? They've been in this boot camp, Alan. They've all gotten together in Sweden. Yep. Has their level of play been steadily improving over the course of Flashpoint 2? I don't think there's any doubt that it has. I think in the group stages, they looked really shaky at times, particularly that opening match against Contact. They had a lot of issues, but that group final against Mad Lines was really sensational from Fnatic, and that was more so what we actually expected coming into the tournament. I think a player we have to talk about going into this match is JW, because I think being a serial major winner, he's had a lot of problems during this kind of online era just in general. And for him now getting to the kind of the business end of the tournament, 
it really, I'm guessing, helps him kind of get in the zone, get focused. Maybe the comms are flowing. Maybe he's, you know, making fewer mistakes. I really do think in that up bracket final versus MIBR, he was really sensational in that game. And particularly on CT Versco, he was absolutely destroying MIBR. So JW, he might be in a culprit of making some mistakes in the past. But now here in this tournament, he looks really, really great. And I think with JW in general, people neglect how much his kind of fundamental game has come along in the last couple of years when potentially 2014, 15, 16, he either had the, all the aggressive plays, he could get incredible opening picks, but he didn't have all the fundamentals to, you know, con well, play well mid-round, really not brilliant back in the day in the afterplants. But now I think he has a very flushed out game. And if he have, comes in with great form, I think he could really take it to Jame and be the best author in this series. Now, Crims has been one of the top-rated players and tied for number one at points in time throughout this, this tournament of Flashpoint, Thorin. How is Crims' performance? Is he living up to expectations? Because we've seen such strong performance, not only from JW, like Alan is saying, but Brolan and Crims as well. For me, that's the X factor that right now, I also have Fnatic as the favorite. I mean, spoiler, we'll find this out later, but I actually picked them as the pre-tournament favorite as well. And obviously they were absolutely not the top ranked team. They were actually third out of, I think, all the teams we had at the time. So one of the reasons why actually is they also have a depth that I don't think any other team has, even in the roster. Like when we talk about Virtus Pro, it's going to be pretty strict as to which players we expect to do well in and what capacity. Whereas the fact that Crims can be a top rated player at this tournament and has had a fairly quiet year and even some of last year, he went off the boil a bit. It shows that it isn't just Brawlan being the best player and it has to just be him. It isn't just JW who's really picked up his orping. They've also got a third guy who, again, could top the server, could be the best player in the game. And so I think that makes it a really difficult matchup for any team to go against right now. Yeah, that's fair enough. And we are going to see Fnatic in just a few minutes. Before we go further with our analysis, though, let's get into our picks and bans and see how this is going to shake out for our two teams in our winner's final. So up first, you guys, what are the bans going to be heading into this matchup? Right. Well, luckily, this is also a scenario where it's actually pretty obvious because Fnatic permabans nuke and spoiler, Virtus Pro always permabans nuke. So in theory, the yes. ban is just who goes first and who is willing to float because whoever goes first can in theory not ban Nuke and they can make the other team do it. Like if I'm Fnatic, they're the one especially that I believe can force Virtus Pro to ban Nuke yes. if it's second. So the question then becomes, Alan, like if it's one or the other, what do you think they do as their ban if the other bans Nuke? I think they're both going to float Nuke here and I'm fairly sure of it actually. I think the only risk is Fnatic, if they're feeling really confident, could actually pick into Nuke here sure. if it's open because they have actually played it with this lineup and it could really be the case that Virtus Pro have nothing on Nuke. So there is a bit of a risk there, but I think both of them are going to float Nuke in this one. I think Fnatic are going to ban Mirage after seeing what Virtus Pro did to OG and Big. And I think from the Virtus Pro perspective, I think they're going to ban Overpass here because be logical. even though they had some good results on it, I think Fnatic, they might have looked a bit shaky in that MIBR game, but Fnatic very storied on this uh, on that map. And I think... In that matchup, I don't think uh, BP would win that. So those would be my bans in this first round. Well, you guys. I are... also agree with the general philosophy, by the way. In theory, both teams should actually float it and not ban it at yes. all in the series and wait till the very end. Well, you guys are in for a surprise. So what ended up happening here is Fnatic won the coin toss and asked Virtus Pro to make the first ban. Virtus Pro did ban Nuke, so they decide not to float it. Yes. And Fnatic bans Dust 2 in response. Okay. I mean, the interesting thing there is obviously Dust2 is a very strong map for Virtus Pro, but it's not as though you think like Fnatic couldn't have played it at all. I mean, sure, it's not one they play very often. The interesting part there is I do think Virtus Pro have lost a trick in the regard that because they didn't ban Overpass, as Alan says, it's right there for Fnatic to pick. Like, if I watched yeah. that Mad Lion Games, that's the map I'm picking. That's the map where, to go against what I said on Inferno, that's the map where Jim looked terrible. Like, actually, he was just isolated at the A site the whole, whole game, basically. I think these picks now are going to be fairly certain. I'm pretty sure Fnatic will pick into Overpass here. And over on the VP side, I think they will pick Mirage. It might not be a map they pick so much, but Fnatic, they haven't played it very much. They've had some shaky maps in this tournament and other tournaments. So I think those will be the picks going into the next round. Virtus Pro does have the first pick, and they are going to select Vertigo as their map. And really? Fnatic picks Overpass, as you anticipated. Ooh. Big surprise on the Vertigo side. Why? I mean, they even sometimes second rotation ban it themselves. So it's clearly not a map they're loving. I, that suggests to me that they are picking this map legitimately just based on what they saw perhaps in that Fnatic MIBR series. Maybe they think they saw some holes, Alan. Well, even Virgo is really strange because they lost it against Big and they had a really shocking CT side on that one. 
And even though Vert's probably been looking better on Vertigo, it's not a map this lineup has liked much in the past. So this is a really surprising pick. It might even indicate that in their minds, they might even think they're an underdog coming in here. They want to go for kind of a left field pick that Fnatic weren't ready for. So that one is very, very surprising. As a reminder, in the, in the quarterfinals, we did actually see Dignitas Vi beat Fnatic on, on Vertigo. The thing that I can't really understand as well from the VP side is, like, I could actually see where Yakinda's style could work well on this map. I think Jim is going to be terrible on the T side of this map. This is going to be a classic example where he just wits at the back, and maybe he's watching the flank, but that's about it. He's not going to be part of the attacking crew, so that ops are not really going to go to that much use, I don't think, on this one. And also, this is an example of where I think maybe Vert's Pro have tried to get too cute with the Vito. Like, I think it's perfectly fine to pick your Inferno in this scenario. Yes, it's a great map yes. for tonight. Yes, it's their favorite, but it's the map that you have played an enormous amount of times and you still have a very high win rate on so i think it would have been fine to go for comfort here as the underdog all right let's move into our next bands what do you think our ban final bands and decider map going to be i think Fnatic is definitely going to ban mirage here even though they're not the biggest fans of train vp don't like it much either so i think they're almost certainly going to ban mirage out here and then from the vp perspective i think they'll just take train and we're just going to have kind of a ha uh, kind of handshake scenario here and it's going to be an inferno third yeah, I mean, you have to remember, it, like, Fnatic themselves against Mad Lions pick train, so it's not as though they won't play it, but I think also as a result, yeah, logically, they just leave it, and essentially, I think VP just opts into, let's have sort of like a 50-50 third map. So VP does ban Mirage first, Fnatic bans Inferno, leaving our decider as train. So very surprising from what you guys would have predicted heading into this overall draft. Certainly is. I'd say this is very Fnatic-sided, actually, in the end, and... To be honest, I've actually kind of questioned what VP were thinking with this veto. That Mirage ban at the end, I don't think Fnatic like Mirage that much. I think they could have pushed them onto Mirage and probably won that map if it did go to it. So I'm not sure what VP were thinking going into this veto. Obviously, from their perspective, they'll have some idea of what they were going for. So hopefully we see on kind of this Vertigo pick especially what they were planning. Hopefully they have some good prep against Fnatic and make this a close series. Yeah, I'm liking the 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 veto for Fnatic, actually. I thought they were the team that needed to explore the veto. The fact that Virtus Pro has sort of gone to the fringes themselves, I think, suggests either they've got something genius they think they've seen from the demos, or this is like they're just trying to put the surprise factor out there. And so one thing I think makes this matchup very, very interesting is this is not one we've seen this year. This is not a matchup that's happened in the online tournaments. Like Virtus Pro usually isn't in the European tournaments. And so unlike the OG versus Big or the Fnatic versus Big and OG type scenarios, where we've seen those combinations many times this is a fresh one so i think maybe that's even part of why vp is going into the uncharted territory but i'm favoring fanatic with this veto are you guys thinking a 2-0 both of you seem to be predicting predicting fanatic but by what margin thing is with vertigo that's a really hard one to pick i don't think either teams are going to be very consistent on that map so that one could definitely go either way i think the other two maps do slightly favor the fanatic side and i think if it goes to train i think fanatic they have quite a lot of class actually on that map they brought it into the map all over the summer they have actually even though we consider them to be a very default heavy team on the t side they do have some really great executes on that map so if it goes to train are we taking fanatic overall yes i'd probably take fanatic two to one here and i actually think in terms of kind of this matchup, I think with VP coming into the tournament and in particularly some of the early stages, I kind of criticize their team fundamentals, like man up, man down, communication, all these sort of aspects that you wouldn't expect a newer team to have so well. And I think in the group final against OG, I think they got exposed for having bad fundamentals in some cases, particularly players like Yakinda. He can win rounds, but he can lose rounds as well. We're getting too aggressive in these man advantage scenarios. And I think in that quarterfinal, upper bracket quarterfinal against Mad Lions, I think we saw it again. I think Mad Lions were the better team in that series. And even though they have weaker kind of individual players, I think they did outplay them on a team level, even though they lost that series. So coming into this one, because Fnatic are so solid, their fundamentals are incredible on both sides. That's why I think Fnatic are going to win this series. And even I'll pick them now. I think Fnatic is going to win this tournament. I don't know about 2-0 because these are like probably the two most ridiculous teams in the tournament for every single series being three maps, super <laughs> drawn out, like they can never close a game. So I don't think I can actually trust Fnatic to 2-0 it, but I do think the map Vito favours them. I have a hard time seeing what VP does aside from perhaps win Vertigo, so I'll give them some credit for the pick. But I don't think either team have shown like the, the class that they're just going to close it out very quickly. And it's a big pressure match. Fair enough. So Fnatic, the favorites based on this draft, according to our analysts, we are going to head into our first map. A bit of a surprise in Vertigo. It will be Virtus Pro's selection and casting are Bardolf and Hawka. Aha! There's been a mutiny, hasn't there? 
It's not bad Ooh. off at all. We've taken over. Hawker, how are you doing on this fine evening? I'm doing well, Anders. I'm doing well. It seems like a good day for some Counter-Strike, don't you think? I, I agree. Uh, we've been waiting for a while, obviously. Some uh, slight complications, but I think we should be good to, the, uh, good to go, hopefully, in a, in a couple of seconds here. So I just look forward to it. I think this is actually going to be a really interesting game. Yeah, I think so, too. The, the veto was always interesting because, like the Des was saying, both these teams permaban that nuke, so you get weird stuff going on, weird shenanigans with that. Uh, I think Vertigo as well as the first map will be fun. We're going to get right into it here. It is going to be VP going up against Fnatic in our upper bracket final. Oh, yes. Let's get this underway. Virtus Pro starting on the T side, Fnatic on the CT side, and let's just see. I put my, you know... The few pinnacle points that I had still left, I put them on Fnatic for this one, I believe, even though VP have looked really impressive, and I actually sort of am a little bit in love with the Yakinda and Jame combo that's been going on. I think it's really awesome. I still feel like the Swedes, you know, they'd have to they'd have to do a lot wrong here to not at least put up a pretty good fight. Nice flashbang in, Brolin actually, and he's gonna catch both Sanji and Buster while they were setting up for that attack, Hawker. That's a that's a disaster. Yeah, the second one through the wall was lovely for Brolan. He'll take that all day long. And now it's got to be a plan B for Virtus Pro. They're going to come back to the A side of the map. JW gets a first kill, pushed into this position. He is going to be traded out by Kicker, but VP will begin to run into this A side of the map. Yeah, and all they have to do is now is just not make any, you know, really huge mistakes. Just try and stay back, which is pretty much what they're doing. I mean, they've, they've got this covered right now. About to be three people on the A bomb site. Molotov not catching anyone. That would have been a nice start. They have a couple of smokes here for VP, so maybe a bomb plant could be could be happening. And I think Fnatic should just, I mean, you know, try and take some shots through, but don't throw anyone away to it unless you want to go all in. But you've got you've got some sort of flank that's going to be coming eventually here. Just make sure you don't lose the two on four at this point in time. Yeah, they're not even going aggressive. They're just waiting for it. Sitting back and relaxing on the Fnatic side of things. They feel like they're in control of this retake. And they should be in pretty good spots here. Brolan's on that long flank. Flusher having a little look at the bomb site as well. And Yakinda's still trapped on the site itself, but he's got the first kill. This could give VP a chance, but they have no clue. Brolan's on this big flank. He's going to get a freebie. And now Yakinda has so many angles to deal with. He's got the first kill, but he won't get any more. Brolan with a quad kill on the pistol round. Great start to the game from him. And Fnatic get the first round on the board on Vertigo. That's so rough because that, that flank from Brolin you were talking about, it's so late that they just, as you said, they don't even expect it at all. Uh, you cannot still, I mean, even in that one versus three, he didn't even look that stressed. He just looked like, all right, well, here we go. So um, didn't didn't manage to complete it, but you can tell that he was, uh, he was ready. If he landed that second headshot, it would have been quite something. A bomb plant, nonetheless, for VP. They're going to be buying some upgraded pistols, and then I'm guessing in the next round they're going to go, they're going to go pretty hard at it. And Fnatic, I don't know, I mean they have a lot of SMGs, so if they if they don't lose any of them and they just carry them into the next round, then the next round will be SMGs versus AKs, and I never really know about that. I feel like that that could be a problem. It's always scary. Golden holding mid with that MP9. Not really the range he wants for it. Brolan's a little bit closer, but the Org is successful. Turning round, getting a triple kill, and James shouldn't be getting onto the site here. He's going to try and tuck tail and turn around. JW will take him out, though, and they will save that Org. Only one man dying on the Fnatic side, but this is where we should get a better buy for both teams. And as you said, Anders, we've got to take a look at what Fnatic are going to have in this round and whether they'll get aggressive with these SMGs, because there are lots of options on Vertigo for that CT aggression. Yeah, I, I mean... I think what you're, what you're, what you're lead, the path you're leading us down now is the one that makes sense, where you, where if you only have the SMGs, or you have three of them like now, four actually, then that's what you should go for, right? Try and put them up front. Don't let them hang back and defend the bomb site. They are four people over at the A ramp, and that will, uh, I believe, just a single player defending the B bomb site. And it's not even the Orc that's over here. That's kind of shocking to me. It's actually Flusher, who's just over there. So that's a little bit interesting. You kind up. Able to spot out Ooh. Golden, but still goes down. Care to explain that one, Hawker? <laughs> yeah, some things just can't be explained, Anders. You know, you know this better than anyone, I feel. How's that working? Oh, man. Well, at least VP get that AK off the map. Jame just threw it out of the map entirely. So Fnatic can't get that gun, but it's still an absurd kill for Golden to get, jumping into position. 
Now Fnatic are putting another player back to that B site just to shore up their defense across the map because they have that man advantage. And for Virtus Pro, they have a few nades left, but they don't have any real map control here. They're going to start to walk their way up ramp to try and get some way into this round. Yeah, still a lot of people on the side for the for the Fnatic team. 45 seconds. I mean, 45 seconds is a lot of time for, a, for an execute on this particular map because you're right next to the bomb site. So I'm less worried about the time, but I am worried about the fact that, you know, they're going to have some advanced warning here. And if they lose any of these duels, I just, again, the backup is going to be there pretty quick for Fnatic. It does look like it'll be a flank this time, but um, they could still set up for something. That's the early warning. 24 seconds, and they're going to flash their way around the corner, trying to see if they can make the entry. Crim's going down. No real response. JW! He came running to the smoke and just shot at the wall instead of Kickered, so... What a great uh, plot here for VP, not losing anyone, and suddenly they have the man advantage. Yeah, turning it around rather quickly. Smoke's still on the site, but no nades for Fnatic, and quite a few angles that they have to be worried about. I think this has got to be a favorable position for VP right now, and you can see Fnatic are aware of it. They're already thinking about the save call. Only one org going to be carried on over, but that is great for VP. Even though they lose a man early, they're able to come back into the rounds. They keep their calm on this map. Again, Vertigo is the pick of VP here. A bit of a surprise for some of the people over on the desk that VP were willing to pick this map, but they definitely looked comfortable there taking the A-bomb site. Yeah, that was very well done. I don't mind the save call for Fnatic, but it is just so much more depressing, isn't it, when you're, when you're saving MP9s and the org, fair play, but... The two MP9s there. I'm not a big fan. Now they have picked up an AWP and an M4 in this round. So it's starting to look, you know, just a little bit better. And it's pretty early on. So I guess we can we can let that, let it slide for the for the minute. No one has any real money to work with. So yeah, very open game to begin with. It'll be interesting to see if they can keep if they can follow up on that kind of an executor at the A ramp later on or if uh, if they're gonna be denied. Oh, they're returning to it already. Ooh, Yakinda, the man going in first. This time, surely he gets the better of this fight. He does get the headshot against Golden. No MP9 shenanigans at the start of this round. Virtus Pro have that ramp control they wanted, and this time they have even more utility they could use into this A bomb site. Now, JW in previous games has been really good on this side of the map, but he gets dealt with, and Crims is the only man really on the bomb site right now. He's going to get the first kill, but Yakindar finds him from above, and Yakindar finally traded out into a 3v2. That's a very, very important kill. Brolin now up on top. He's going to get both of them sprayed down and on the ramp itself. Buster coming in with a nice shot. So now it's Flusher one on one here. He's going to put up a nice smoke. Cav grabs a kit in the meantime. Buster sneaking around. He's got an AK here. Flusher creeping out, but Buster, he flicks the shot and is able to bring him down. I can't believe Buster wins that. He was looking the wrong way entirely. That looked to me like Flusher was going to have that kill every single time. Maybe this is what VP are relying on on Vertigo. Just take these sort of scrappy fights all over the bomb site. Rely on some of these skilled players that we know they have. Yakindar making solo plays as he jumps towards the site to get a couple of entry kills. And then Buster with a really snappy shot at the end to close out the round. And that puts Fnatic in another poor economic position, Anders. They've been in a, a pretty awkward spot throughout these first couple of rounds, honestly. They've never really had a perfect full buy, and now they have to save to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, that's that's been happening so much, I think, throughout the tournament, right? You just you don't get off to that good start on the CT side, even if you win the pistol. I mean, if you, if you don't get to carry it forward that much, it definitely becomes an issue early on, and everyone's had to sort of deal with it a little bit. Uh, not that they can't recover. I mean, it's still really, really early on here. So we'll see. They have some deagles so far. One of them already going down there. JW just immediately shut down. They're willing to take this fight. I mean, for Fnatic, this is a good fight. If they can just keep at range and sort of tap away, that's good news. If VP start using the grenades, that's where Fnatic should have a, a pretty sizable disadvantage. But they're all here. They've given up on the B bomb side entirely. With good reason, VP have been pressuring A in these earlier rounds, and they've pressured A in this round as well. Sanji's still making sure to watch the flank, just in case any Fnatic players try pushing from behind. But as this timer ticks down, it's looking more and more likely that VP will be ending on the A site. There was a little bit of a sound cue there given away by Buster. That may have been heard by the Fnatic players on the bomb site, but there are still nades for VP, which I think should help them get onto this bomb site pretty safely. 
Yeah, crims a bit early. I mean, it's a good idea. You, you sort of set up the line for it, and then when the smoke is down, you can just tap it. But timing was not working out in his favor. Roland trying to see if he can catch anyone, but this is all just random guessing. And the AK, let's be honest, just has, a, you know, more bullets, faster rate of fire. Almost always going to win that fight versus a pistol. Last alone is Crims, and he'll go down. That's a quad kill for Buster to pick up. It's not bad. I mean, it's only against pistols, but he'll be he'll be happy about what's going on. And Fnatic are able to buy in this upcoming round, but missing some things, unless I don't know. Yeah, they they can't buy the orb on JW, can they? So that is a little bit disappointing. Yeah, not ideal for them, especially because JW was so good with that AWP on the CT side of Vertigo against MIBR. He shut them down so many times at the start of that specific game, but here comes some aggression, and Buster gets the kill while blind. Roland has pushed down. He will be able to trade, but how the hell is he going to get out of here, Anders? I think he had a Molotov that didn't want to... Oh, they used it already. Smoke to follow. That's a lot of grenades emptied. I mean, he's not going to fall back, which is kind of uh, impressive considering the... This the position that he's in here. Low on health, still going to be hanging around. He's brought in... Actually, he's called a backup uh, away. Golden was walking in towards the B-bomb side, but now he's just uh, started to, to step back. And Brolin also going to start to fall back. So this is an amazing call right now. On very little information, it actually feels like they're already making the, the sort of slight lean towards the A-bomb side, or at least they're close to being able to have three people here early on. So, I mean, it is a bit of a risk to try and do this, but with Fnatic... They're losing a couple of rounds here. I could, uh, I can respect it. And oh. I'm... oh, that's gonna really hurt, isn't it? Just a casual it's... two health for JW. His teammates nade nearly hit him as well, but he's gonna sit behind the sandbags and he hopes that those double nades make VP think he's not here. And there's a very real chance that could be the case. And as he's still sitting behind the sandbags, still biding his time, but he's about to hear those nades being thrown. Yeah, even two health is going to be plenty enough, although Crims does go down. JW with one kill, and on the other side, Jane with the AWP. Only 20 seconds left, and the bomb is making its way into the B-bomb site. This is not where the fight is really at. Buster's low on health, but it doesn't matter. There's no one here, and they're going to realize by now. Oh, what a play coming out here from VP. Molotov up to buy even more time. Golden jumping past trying to catch him. I think they know that he's low and they're hunting all over the place for him. Now it's a bit dangerous because the orb has shown up and I don't know, VP, let's see how good this is. That grenade I think was actually meant to go down, but instead it just flies on to middle instead. Oh, Golden, that's an imp That's the kill they needed. The defuse was in, only Buster could have stopped it and that will be the round for Fnatic in spite of what looked like a very, very cool late round call out of VP. Yeah, those late round post plants on the B site on Vertigo can be tough at times, especially if the CT have a, a bit of utility there just to cut off that stairs position. It can be really tricky to actually get to properly see that bomb. And you see that being the issue for VP. They finally peak the bomb with one or two seconds left. Unfortunately, as soon as that player goes down, it's round over and it's more aggression from Brolan, always seeming to get into this position on the B stairs, getting some early ground for his team. Fnatic have left mid open at the start of this round. They're just focusing on the sides of the map. We'll see what VP do to counter them. Yakinda currently leading the charge. He's been getting some good entry kills on this A ramp. He's looking for another one and he spotted that first player out. JW though waiting in the wing. Spray is successful. He's committed to this position though. JW is going to have to fight his way out of this. It's such an awkward fight for both players. His teammates are now helping him out. JW finally falls and it's into a 3v3. Oh, it feels like the length of that fight just dragged more and more people from both sides into it so that you kept having to reinforce and kept losing players trying to do something. Three on three with a minute left. Let's see if VP could make another good call. Right now, Buster is back and checking and making sure there are no flanks happening from the B side. They know that Brolin's aggressive there in the beginning, so they're probably a little bit worried that he's you know going to be pushing up behind them again. And at the same time, Jame and Sanji just over here taking a look towards the a bomb site and it would be crimson flusher who are at least in the vicinity or they're not, they're not really hard defending it so might just be trying to make sure that they don't get picked off one at a time here and, and that they can just go for some sort of a retake both teams have a lot of grenades here hawker so i don't know i mean this could this could swing both ways they're not even using their nades on the vp side though they're just sneaking onto the site 
I like this from Jame as well. He's the man who's taking the first angle with the AWP. You don't often see Jame make plays like this. We'll see if it works for him this time around because the bomb's going to be planted and they're not here in time. Two kills for VP. And just like that, Brolan's rotating over, but he may not decide to even go for this any longer. A 1v3 is just not going to happen for him. Even though Fnatic seem to have pretty decent information there, VP just sneak up onto the site and those two kills just seal the deal. That was really, really well done. Buster is landing some great shots at the moment. Even when it actually looks like he's a bit out of position or maybe even looking the wrong way, he's got some snap aim at the beginning of this match, and that will that'll certainly help out. And yeah, I think uh, just to reiterate that point you were making, because I think that's really critical, right? Not actually using the grenades to get onto the site and just you know sneaking in there, definitely catching Fnatic off guard, right? It would have been would have been great if they would have thrown a smoke re really early, because then they could have brought in Brolan and it would have been a three on three retake. But no such thing was happening there. So a fourth round on the board for VP, and I don't know. Again, Fnatic back without really much money to work with here. It's real interesting. Yeah, that is a really cool play from VP in that sense, because I think Fnatic had at least one incendiary, right? They had the ability to maybe try and deny the bomb plant just with their nades, but they just didn't know that VP were on the site so quickly. And then those couple of fights are basically all that VP need at that point. So it's obviously a bit of a risk to just walk onto the A site like that, but it works out for them this time. Brolan, that one man with the saved rifle for Fnatic in this round. Unfortunately, he's on the wrong side of the map because VP are fully committing to B, and right now this B site is open for business. Yeah, charging all the way through. This boost is a, is a cool little idea, but it's already been pushed away from that Molotov, so I'd say keep the pistols around if you want, but try and make sure that you can get that org into the later rounds. Economy really is the, you know, the, the real struggle for the Swedes right now. I can't remember, Hawker, who did you pick for uh, for this one? Did we even talk about that? I don't think we did. I think, I, I'm pretty sure I picked Fnatic. Just because right. I, I don't think VP have played Fnatic that recently. And I feel like whenever a team's playing Fnatic for the first time, it, it's just so hard to deal with some of the shenanigans they get up to, you know? Yeah, you can you can definitely, especially if they're coming in really hot, then it could be it could be tricky. Which Brolin is, I mean, he's eleven and three. But where's the rest of Fnatic? They've gone missing, haven't they? Oh, there's no ult for JW in this round either. He's oh, you're just right. shy. A hundred short. So sad. <laughs> he just wants a little loan. One of his teammates just needs to help him out, you know. Imagine what the game would be like if you could do that, though. If you could, you know. Oh, God. Imagine pistol rounds. Everyone would, like, pull together to buy one AK or something stupid. I'm sure people would try that. <laughs> Someone would give it a go. All right. Very, very similar setup once again here with the, the lone person that be at the beginning. Heavy emphasis towards the ramp from the CT side and the T side now. You're kind up up there trying to make the move. Some grenades being exchanged. And looks like Crims will dodge the Molotov. You're kind very low on health, though. Uh, but yeah, that's just the usual skirmish happening over at the A ramp these days, and so far no one's gone down. They've left Kickert here, and they might try and hit the P bomb site really early while everyone else is occupied over at the A side. That would be cool. Oh, this is a really cool way of selling enough presence towards this A site to make Fnatic worried. Now Kickert's going to run back to B to join his teammates. Brolan has to get into position. The flashes are not good, though. It's Buster with two entries again onto this B site. He has been really good at just trading his teammates, getting the all-important kills to get them onto the site itself. A couple of flashes for VP as they pop onto the site. And now Fnatic probably have to save again, Anders. They've been saving so much in this game. It always feels bad, but at least this time they're saving some rifles, so there's no other option here. Yeah, they can't really do anything, can they? I mean, I think by the time they realized that that B hit was coming was when I guess he was being basically shut down already, Flusher, and I think he just put out, like, essentially one Molotov, and they had they'd already run past. It was so late that it would have never done anything to stop them. So, very late information. And when you're playing, if you're the sole defender on the B bomb site and you're that far back, it's that's that's the downside, isn't it? You're gonna know basically when they're stepping onto the site, and I think that's partly what happened there. So, let's see if this tenth round will be any different. But you're right, there has been a lot of saving for Fnatic, and that's oh, I mean, that's only really worth something if you can make the rifles 
you know, put them into play in some of these upcoming rounds. I'm still looking at Flushers 1 and 6, Crims 2 and 5, Golden 3 and 6. There's there's definitely some something that's missing here outside of Brolin, who's 12 and 4, but... Can't all be Brolin. No, there's only one Brolin. Especially Flusher, one for six is that B site anchor. I think he's had a, a, a fair few rounds where he's he's been rotating over from B. Sometimes it's it's been Brawlan getting aggressive towards B as well, which maybe could be one of the answers for Fnatic. But then the A sided players obviously have to step up. So yeah, some, something's got to change basically in terms of the individuals on the Fnatic side. And throughout this tournament, Crims and JW have both been brilliant. I think JW specifically has well overperformed his average HLTV rating. So I'm definitely looking for him to do a little bit more. We've got these early nades again in towards the ramp, as are so often coming through. And it's Yakindar who's always taking the early damage. This time, JW's got him on the edge of that smoke. And there's no one there to help Yakindar out. Yeah, and they're not set up for any kind of a B response here either on the VP side. They can't immediately just swap, swap and try and go for it. JW's pushed all the way down, and Kicker absolutely saw that coming. I don't know if he made noise or anything, but he was so zoned in on that shot that that was going to be quick so back into a four on four the short success that Fnatic had just experienced they almost immediately gone afterwards and now it's a four on four sneaking up his kicker the rest of them are not that far behind and they have the bomb over here as well crims he's got a mo he got a smoke he can put this out yeah right away that's not bad kicker really wants to wall bang him but he can't the sandbags are very strong Golden's going to get aggressive. Oh, this fight is one that he's going to win. James taken down low as well. Brolan's helping from above. Golden and Brolan combining for all the kills between them. And all of a sudden, James the only man remaining. He's going to get dealt with. Brolan pushing with the USP. And that has got to be a confidence booster for Fnatic. It's a clean sweep on the ramp. They just take that fight straight up. I don't think they even they even put out many grenades. They were they were sort of making a lot of noise when they were coming down that ramp. I thought a lot of that looked like it was gonna backfire on Fnatic, but I guess they just won the fights. So fair play. But it it didn't look anywhere near as smooth as I would have liked. But whatever. The result was there, so can't really complain too much. Six to four, the scoreline. Moving into round number eleven, and this time they're not heading straight for the A ramp, but they're sort of lurking around middle and right outside of B. So we'll see how this is gonna work out. Bit of a Molotov flusher trying to be somewhat aggressive here, but that B, the B's been lost. Oh god, they're splitting B almost immediately. This is so fast. Oh, Brolin! More headshots! He nearly gets the triple. They still do convert it, but that is so much damage. Yeah, and I do think this retake's doable. With the amount of utility Fnatic have at their disposal, they could try and force VP back. They could use those smokes towards the stairs and maybe give themselves a chance, especially with JW being on this flank. He can contain them on this other side of the map. It's up to Fnatic to get this early kill, though. They need to make sure they clear this man off the bomb site to begin with. And JW is about to be the first point of contact from behind. The AWP slowly sneaking up. Fnatic are taking so much time here, though. I don't know if they can really win this. Finally, JW misses his chance, but he gets it second time of asking. Second shot from JW lands, and they get all the kills they need onto the site. It's so close on the defuse, but I think Fnatic have just about done it. <laughs> oh man, if you're gonna miss the easy shot, but you didn't make up for it with the two last shots there, then I guess fair play. That's that's just cool, isn't it? What a round. Six to five, and VP must have thought that's it. We've got this one. If not for JW and Brolin, that one, they don't even get close. So um, yeah, that was that was real strange. Almost all of the money is. It's disappeared here for VP, so I mean there are some signs right now that Fnatic actually can turn this around. If they can win this next up and coming round, I think I think it's gonna get interesting once again and, and maybe Fnatic can can get just a chance at the very least to relax and breathe a bit here. Yakindar's always involved in these early fights. This time JW goes down early, and with Yakindar finding another entry for his team. This has got to be a fantastic feeling for VP right now. They've got a clean two-man lead. They haven't even taken any damage. And Yakindar might be able to make more out of this. He's sneaking up into this short position. There is a Fnatic player committed to the site. It's Crims who now has some assistance. Jame has just been chunked down to 13 health as well. So finally some damage back for Fnatic. 
but they have got to do a hell of a lot to get back into this round. Yeah, VP are just content to sit around Crims. That's a good flashbang. It's a great idea to try and check that. But he was already around the corner, so actually all that flashbang did was help your Kindar to know when to peek afterwards. There's no way to know that. I still think it's a great idea for Fnatic. Now, the B-bomb side is being checked out at the minute, and they, they've got a bomb there and everything else. So even with a kill like that from Brolan, they're going to be way too late. They're going to realize that, wait a minute, this is not working out. And again, as much as you'd want them to, I don't think it's worth going for the retake. They're just so far away, and they don't really have what it takes here. So, man, it, it's just taken a lot right now, isn't it, Hawker, to put VP away? It seems like even when they are... The, you know, encountering some pretty strong plays from Fnatic, they just don't give up. Yeah, they're showing that they've got some stuff up their sleeve on Vertigo. I think they've showed a, a couple of rounds that might have caught Fnatic off guard as well. That round previously where they went back to B, they went for that quick B play as well, which seemed to catch Fnatic out. So it looks like VP have got a lot prepped for this map, which is exactly what you'd expect. I think it's worth talking about your Kindar quickly as well, because against the CIS teams that VP have been playing against, he'd probably been VP's best player. But at this tournament, he's only putting up a 1.05 rating. That's well below normally what you expect from this guy based on what we've seen from him. And I was looking at the opening kill stats. On the T side specifically, your Kindar's having some real struggles there. Normally, he wins the fight on the T side 48% of the time. That's a pretty good ratio. But in this tournament, that's gone down to 33% success rate in those opening duels. So seeing your Kindar get some of those early kills, definitely something that VP will be looking at going forwards. Yeah, I mean, he's such a powerful player, I feel like. You know, even even as you say, you know, maybe been maybe been a little bit of a slump in terms of those kills. I still feel like he's been really fun to watch this tournament. So, yeah, if he can even step it up to his usual level, that would be quite something. Although, just as you mentioned it, he does lose the battle to Golden over at the Sandbags. And they're going to start to fall back a little bit here, Fnatic. Probably worried about a quick switch in towards the B-bomb site. They got that early fight, but they still know that Orc of Jame is out there somewhere. That's a nice shot. Brolan is, I mean, he is out of control, Hawker. He's 18 and 5. What's going on? Yeah, I just, clearly the young guns in this sort of era just, just love life right now. Jame landing a good shot onto Crims, though. So maybe VP have something to say about this. Again, I like, I almost like when VP go down a man sometimes because I feel like that's when Jame gets a bit more aggressive and realizes he's got to get something going. And he's pretty good at winning those early fights. You see there, very quick shot. Now JW has to make sure he can hold on to this site and he is going to land a shot. Quick kill from JW. And now VP might have some second thoughts about whether they want to push this bomb site. I mean, they're going to have to keep going at this point. 27 seconds left. Bomb does go down. JW again, another great jump up on the box. He's pretty quick right now. And um, that's what they need. If if any one of them can assist Brolin up at the top, then yeah, JW put him up there. Crimson Flusher is still largely missing, but it's starting to look a little bit better. It's up to 6-7 uh, the scoreline, still slightly favoring uh, Versus Pro at the moment. That bomb plan, though, actually means they can put together a reasonable buy here, VP. Without it, I think it would have been... Probably still would have forced it, but it would have been a bit tricky, wouldn't it? Yeah, it wouldn't have been as good as this, especially in terms of just having those full nades. If you're going to hit that A site, you want to have those two smokes at a minimum. So having more smokes means you have the ability to maybe cause some misdirection. You also want to have those smokes in the early ramp fights at times. You want to be able to put down some smokes yourself to cut off some of these angles that the CTs have. And you can see on the minimap, the Ts have already used two smokes towards this ramp position, obscuring the vision of some of these Fnatic players. It's always your Kindar in first at ramp, isn't it, Anders? Every time, he is the man leading the charge. And JW, oh, he is very close to the edge of the building right now. Yeah, don't walk off. We've already had a little bit of that happening. Oh, they nearly lined up for a double JW. That would have been the way to get this round started for him. He's back in, flicking. They're just so aggressive. Oh. That actually looked like it connected, or maybe it was the oh. AK. I'm not sure. That one definitely does. Taking down the James. They're still just sat here, and finally they get some revenge, taking down Golden. But, man, looked like VP were just ducked and covered, trying to not get wallbanged. I'm loving this confidence we're seeing from JW. You know, that three months ago, he wasn't even using the AWP as his main weapon. He had more AK kills than AWP kills in some of the tournaments he was playing. 
which is crazy to think about because look at how good he is on the AWP. He's been landing some unreal shots in this game and Kickert's going to try and stop that from happening on the other side. Molotov will force him away, so JW will stay alive. 33 seconds left, but take a look at the minimap ad as the bomb's going back to B. This is something they've been doing so much, VP. I really appreciate it. They've been so good at doing it. A little bit of a peek there. And look, that's going to draw Broland back from the middle. And as you pointed out, this is going to be a B hit. So just that little peek is all it took. Although Flusher, that's a huge kill. He's out fighting. He knows the bomb is here now. And everyone's going to start to rotate in. Sanji's alone on the site. And with a Molotov on top, that is going to be the round done with. Five seconds left on it. And Flusher just... You know, one and seven before this round. Those two kills just saved the round for the 100%. So that's a good way to make his mark back in. We're going to go to the 15th round here with not everything they would have wanted VP. So this is a really good comeback so far, I think, for Fnatic. Yeah, they've definitely grown into this game. They'll obviously be thanking Brolan in a big way for carrying them through a lot of these rounds, especially earlier in the half. He won them the pistol. He got them quite a few of their earlier round wins. He kept them competitive. But now some of the other players are starting to show up. We're seeing JW land some AWP shots. Flasher getting involved in that last round. Feels like now that Brolan has got them into this position, the rest of the Fnatic players are going to start to step up alongside him. Oh, tight angle for JW, but he doesn't miss those. He's got the early kill, and that is ramp control in favor of Fnatic. Wow, what a good start here once again. Yeah, JW's rapidly catching up to Brolan at the moment. The two of them... Even if the rest of the team maybe have, you know, a little bit slot the gate here, that surely will still make a big impact. Roland going to be in the middle alone for the minute. Crimson's the bomb is... right now, by the way. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's a bit awkward. He's sneaking up, isn't he, though? So, I mean, just that play alone. Surely everyone else in Fnatic is just frozen, waiting for Crims to, to call something in. To find that kill for free. That is just a deagle, but it does cause all of the chaos. Golden's down here as well. Why have they taken it over the T side of the map? Oh, what's happening? They just want all the map. Oh, JW closes it out with a stylish double kill. What a weird round, Anders. Fnatic just decided to become T's briefly, but they end up winning the yeah. half 8-7. That is really something. Well, we are going to be back with the second half after the break. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Cause round thoughts travel at a tremendous speed You cloud the smoke of natural blends of weed Only under one circumstance as if I'm blunted Turn that shit up, my clan in the front wanted That with the MCs came to live out the name They had to get two before something had to snort cocaine Did the act the same for me rock With the mental plane just to spark the brain With the building to be born Yo, the wrist up with the track with the watch I'm on a mission that they can say is impossible But when I swing my swords, they are choppable I beat the body dropper, the heartbeat stopper Child educator, plus head infertator Cause nigga styles are old like more five sneakers Lyrics are weak, like clock radio speakers Don't even stop in my station and attack While you're playing bell with the rap Like damn track, what the fuck for? Damn, my lord, I make law I mean justice, I sit that ass to the fourth Ram the clock, let's stay ten times, check it With the pins, I'll be sticking But you can't stay the crime Came through with the wool, slid off on the DL I'm low-key like seashells, I rock these bells Now come aboard, it's my thing to bow Into the chamber, and it's a whole Different sound, it's a wide entrance Small exit like a funnel So deep it's picked up on radios and tunnels Niggas are fascinated how the shit we get Get vaccinated, my logo is branded in your skin With that MC's cane, fill it out the name You can add to the form, some hat The snort cocaine, get to act the same Before he dropped it on that form It's that bitch to play, swap the brain To build it, to be born Yo, it's a bitch to track Gentlemen, we should be 
back with a little bit of a mix here. It is VP versus Fnatic. Second half here at Flashpoint, and we're on the first map still. Hawker, um, I don't know. What do you think? Is it, is eight seven. Do you think VP did enough on that first half to justify picking the map? Uh, it looked like they had good ideas, but I don't know if they've got enough rounds from the Manders. That's the thing that worries me, especially since it felt like Fnatic were warming up as that half went on. Just individually, they're looking really good right now. Well, they're going to have to do quite a bit on the CT side. I definitely agree. You can not. That is, that is a good start. Straight headshot to take down Brolin, who came out of the first half absolutely red hot. So... Crims with the bomb plant now close and checking. They do have some great smokes for the after plant here on the VP side. I'm sure they know how to throw them to try and get in there. And Fnatic, I mean, they're going to have a hard time guessing where that defuse is happening from once all the smokes go down. Actually, one of them is a little bit further away. Crims getting a little bit of a tag there. Buster looking to take the fight, but Crims will take him right down. And a lot of damage there on Kicker. He's just a bullet away from death. Crims, he's trying to line it up, but he's not going to be able to. Now it's on Flusher and Golden here. Now just Flusher for the afterplant. Already being defused inside, and that will go all the way through. And then oh. stabbing Flusher. Oh, no. A moneymaker for Jame at the end of the round. He will absolutely be getting that AWP at some point. Maybe not in this round. Don't really need it. Assuming Fnatic go for a save. Although with that bomb plant, there is a very real chance of the full spy. And that's what we're going to see. AK into the hands of Brolan. Who else would get it, Anders? You've got to give it to the young star. He has been so good so far in this game. And Jame has gone straight for that sniper on the CT side as well. That's something that Fnatic should be at least aware of. Because they saw that knife kill coming at the end there. It's still not going to be easy for them to deal with it though. It feels like you have to give it to Brolan. Yeah, I agree. He's just been... On fire, hasn't he? Buster, that must have looked different from his point of view, because it looked like Flusher was going to be super visible there. Sanji gets the, the the revenge, but that's still pretty good. If there's two people that far forward on the B-bomb side, you can probably guess the rest are going to be A or mid. So I don't know if Fnatic would necessarily want to go straight at this. They might be running into a little bit of a stack. There's that AWP you were talking about on Jame. He's already going to take the one kill, but actually, he misses the chance on Crims. You can't way out in the open, and they're going to... Just be shut down. I can't believe it. Crims with the triple. Wow. That was a quick triple with the Galil. Sanji now with the AWP in his hands. I can't remember the last time I've seen Sanji take the AWP. Normally, he's the man dropping it, but JW gets him at the end. The AWP will be saved for Fnatic now. That is an absolutely massive swing in terms of the economy in favor of Fnatic. VP's money is going to be in all sorts of trouble. Fnatic now get an AWP into their hands. And big props to Crims, who's had a quiet game so far. But he gets three entries onto the A site. I was looking at his stats in the pre-game, Anders, for the tournament, and he has the joint highest kills per round, while also having the third lowest deaths per round at this tournament, which just shouldn't Great. really happen. That is interesting, isn't it? I have to keep keep an eye on that. That does seem like a strange, strange combination. Giving the AWP back to JW, though, as you pointed out, that is that's a bit of an issue. Flusher on a Mac 10, which I think is just fine for this round. I mean, they can they can have Flusher run around and try and look for some sort of an entry, but that I think that that's that shakes the confidence a little bit of VP. And I'm even wondering why Sanji wanted to push with the AWP in that one versus three. I feel like that was even though he got the the first kill really early. I I thought surely surely you want to save that AWP, but I can't I can't figure out in my own mind if I should read that as a you know a bit of desperation for VP, sort of maybe trying to do too much. Oh, Brolan, that is ridiculous. Needs more kills. <laughs> yeah, he might get a couple more here as well. There's a player up close. He can farm up some more frags. He is going to clear the corner. Insta headshot for Brolan. He is not messing about today. He knows his angles. And he is very quick on the trigger. He wasn't quite ready for that angle. But on two health, Brolan will realize it's time to back away. The bomb's gone over to B anyway, so there's no need to take these fights. He can leave it to his teammates. Yeah, finally... You know, a kill happening, but it's only going to last for a second as Crims will show up. Quite relentless Fnatic at the beginning of this second half. 10 to 8 in their favor, and I don't know. It's it's just shocking to me when I look at the scoreboard that Flush is still only at the four kills there. So, that, it, I don't know if I should, you know, that could be a problem for Fnatic, but it could also just be that if Flush just starts to wake up, then actually VP are in a lot of trouble. Hmm. Well, this round sucks for VP. It does, doesn't it? Sanji and Kickit aren't doing too much, are they? 
Yeah, they've been they've been a bit quieter. Ooh, kick up might have a chance to rack up some more kills in this round with that deagle. He's the only man on the A side of the map though. So if the commitment were to come in for Fnatic, he would have a tough time on his hands, that's for sure. I think for Fnatic, if I were them here, I, I wouldn't even really be wanting JW to do too much in these rounds. I'd rather him just guarantee he keeps the AWP just for the economy side of things. Probably just sending Golden first with the MAC-10. He should be able to rack up some frags. And with the Execute onto the A site, this is looking pretty much perfect for Fnatic right now. Yeah, they're not in any real trouble, are they? Bomb is going to be planted. Smokes and Molotovs are up there. JW, as you were mentioning, staying pretty safe, far away from the action. So, ooh, there's the Mac 10 put into play. Some good money. JW getting a random kill in the middle of it, but yeah, they're just they're farming it up right now. They're making so much cash that they're just it's gonna be a while before they get into any kind of real trouble here. Now they have money, Hawker, on the CT side. They're gonna they're gonna do something. Do you want to try and do you want them to follow that Fnatic blueprint? Because Fnatic was so hard on both A and B, like they were pushing up quite far. Yeah, I think you've got to be fighting for ramp at least, right, on the VP side of things. I think from what I've seen on VP on this map, though, James doesn't always like going to that ramp position. Sometimes he'll oh. prefer to play mid. But in this round, he is going A. So we'll keep our eyes on James if he gets given a fight. For Fnatic, though, just looks like a default setup at the start of the round. And those smokes are going to make life pretty uncomfortable for James. He's going to back away. Yeah, not interested in sticking around and fighting around that. JW is being led into the middle with an escort. These crims who took up some grenade damage earlier, I believe. But yeah, they are hoping to catch a kill. Four people on the A side, and Kikud is technically at middle, but he's really, really far back. If they set up for for the kind of B split that we saw VP do on the t on the T side, that would be really interesting because that would just essentially leave Buster. And if Kikud does, doesn't get a kill or just goes down, then Buster is going to be alone. Yeah, we didn't see Fnatic pressure, or, or VP rather, pressure mid too much in their first half. I think that was that one round where they quickly yeah. went up mid for the B split, but they never really went for these later plays looking for picks. They were normally just committing to bomb sites. So for Fnatic, they have a slightly different approach here on their T side, but as the clock ticks down, they will start to group up towards one of these sites. They still have the two smokes they need, Anders, in order to try and push this A site with the Execute, and it is a pretty passive hold from VP right now, James is the one man who might be a bit more aggressive on this short side of the map, but as the time ticks down, I feel like VP are going to figure this out. If James doesn't die, he has a smoke on a Molotov. If he could just stay alive right here, he knows they're coming. He's going to get that kill on Brolin. Crims, though, takes him down, and with him, the grenades are gone as well. Those could have been so valuable. Sanji up close, though, and he'll drop Crims in return, and suddenly the defense is looking a lot better. Eight seconds left, and JW... He could try and get a kill or something here. He's going to try and make sure they can't get, well, at least one of the obsies back for more. <laughs> He's going to get caught trying to steal it. Oh, man. I, I actually can't believe it. They were there much quicker than I expected. I actually thought that was going to be a lot more trouble once Jane went down. I think Fnatic just left it so late in the round. They left it until 25 seconds before pushing, and they started using the molly for sandbags, for example. So I think VP just realized they're willing to take that risk at that point. They're willing to just rotate over to the A side of the map. And, and obviously Sanji being aggressive in that position already was really helpful. Crim's just yes. clueless as to where that was coming from. I think that's the kill that basically decides the round at that point. So credit to VP. The rotation was fast. They get a ninth round together, and that means we get another full buy for both teams, which is what we like to see. Yeah, and everyone is, I mean, maybe a little bit more money on Fnatic, but not that much. So everyone is going to have to fight for, for every round at this point in time. Oh. It's not ideal, is it? Not really. Did what you want to see? They do once again, though, have a pretty big stack here. That's a nice nade followed up with the spam coming through. You can are able to pick that kill, and they're going to be forced back. That's a real problem. Flusher has to win this fight, and he will. That is a big kill. Golden in the middle. Oh, this looks so well planned, apart from the fact that he does get caught with a grenade in hand, but still three on three, and the bomb just now making its way in there. But, man, that is a great entry for uh, Flusher. Yeah, catching a couple of the VP players out. There is still CT utility available, though. 
And on this B-site of Vertigo, it, it can be very awkward to play these post plants. We've seen it previously, but with Crims getting the early kill, that could be the difference maker. VP might not even want to go for this anymore. First player's yeah. backing away. Yeah, it has to be the save call. And just that one kill completely turns the tide of the round. That was very cool. That was very much like what VP were actually doing to Fnatic when they were on opposite sides here because... You see just that little bit of aggression over at the A side. They even lose that fight to begin with. And then mid and B are just wide open for Fnatic to take. That is a cool way to use. The fact that VP have been pretty aggressive or, or, or have been pretty leaning towards the A bomb side early on, right? They've been stacking that A ramp. They've been very aggressive in taking those fights. And Fnatic just abusing that in the, in the round. Golden started to climb up there, and Crims as well. In fact, all of the Fnatic team are really starting to wake up. I, this looks like very, very bad news for VP. If they can't win this upcoming round, they're going to be... Well, they're going to be having a round loss bonus, but they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, committing most of their money into this round as well, with those two saved guns. Jame and Kicker with the saved rifles, and the aggression is successful early into the round. Brolan trying to see if he can hunt down the AWP of Jame, but he goes jumping back to safety. So Fnatic are a man down, but Brolan doesn't want to keep it that way. He's trying to make a solo play onto A. I don't think he saw that. Oh, it's so unfortunate. So, Yakinda going down. I think Jane was a second too late to spot it out. He knows where he is now. The flashbang, though, setting it up, and they're actually bringing everyone. I thought they would use this as, as a distraction to go B, which right now is being checked out. I think JW, yeah, he's looking into the B bomb side and seeing no one, so they're still going to go for it, and instead of going B, he's just going to turn into a lurker in the middle of it, coming in with a flank and taking down Jane. Still trading left and right. I can't believe VP are fighting their way back into this round here. It is a two on three. Ooh, Crims has got to be careful. Wow, what a headshot. He had barely any bullets left, but he makes them count as he hits that one. It's all on Brolan, though. He's got to spray through the smoke. No kit in play for VP. Brolan still spraying, still searching. He's got the first kill, and Sanji's off the bomb. Sanji running at Brolan, but the time is ticking. And without the kit, I don't think he's got time. He can't win this. Brolan just playing the patience game. Fnatic will win another round, and that was really well played at the end there between those two players. They buy enough time to win the round. 13-9 Fnatic. They are coming on strong on this T side. And I think this is why the desk was a bit worried about this pick for VP, because Fnatic are definitely no slouches on this map. Oh, they're definitely not. No, you can, you can see that right now. You can see why they were... Um a bit hesitant to endorse it immediately. I love the little detail of him throwing out the gun as a, as a distraction, you know, pretending that might have been a grenade or something, but you're right, he had no time. Don't know if he had to come off, but I mean, it's hard for him to know either as soon as his teammate goes down. It's a 10 second defuse. Just takes a long, long time. 13 to nine now, favoring Fnatic. Oh, the lineup for Roland. He is completely blind and still picking up those kills. And JW against that MP9. He's going to win the fight. Another two on four here, favoring Fnatic. Man, they are looking to close this map quickly, Hawker. They're not messing around any longer. Yeah, they, they are just not taking any prisoners right now. With the way they're playing, they're not allowing VP time to slow down. The, the thing I am a bit surprised about is I don't think we've seen VP take a timeout which I feel like may be called for, considering Fnatic have really come back strong in this game. Masha not ready for that fight. Buster gets one back. JW completely catching Sanji out in the open, though. So even though Buster got aggressive at B, Sanji gets caught at A, and that should confirm the round. He's so far away, yes, by the time the bomb goes down, and I think what are the chances that you could get into a, to any kind of a winning scenario here? So, 14 to 9, they're going to keep pushing, they're going to keep going, and, I mean, JW's up to 19 kills, Brolan is at 26, so, those two have still been, I mean, they've, they've been spearheading this, uh, this map for the minute for Fnatic, but more and more people are joining in behind them, Crimson, Golden, not that far behind, this is starting to look really, really interesting. Oh, man, and the second map would be on Overpass as well, so, I... It's not 100% clear to me that VP have to win this map to get to a third one, but I think they might be in a little bit of trouble. I mean, even the third map is Train, which Fnatic will pick sometimes. They're very happy with that map as well. True. I think Fnatic coming into this veto are pretty comfortable all round. And that is kind of to be expected. I think these teams do share a lot of the same maps. 
but it's still scary. This is the first time out taken by VP Anders. I was just saying, I don't think they've taken one so far. And mm. that is really surprising because you can see at the top of your screen, this second half has not been too successful for the VP boys. No, it hasn't. They've won, what, two out of eight rounds so far on the T side? Uh, when Fnatic are playing the T side, they've been playing the CT side. That's, a, that's an issue. That's definitely an issue, and especially talking about the economy, which was a topic of conversation when Fnatic were playing on this uh, CT side. They, they themselves were running out of money and struggling in the beginning, but they did manage to put together a really nice end to it, right? Fnatic won five out of six uh, rounds to end the first half with. Something like that needs to happen right now for VP. They're simply running out of uh, runway here. One M4 being saved, and then they just upgrade some pistols and a little bit of armor to follow it up with, but it is not a lot to fight with at the moment. You can see Fnatic doing their homework with some of these nades they're throwing early in the round. That was a nade stack they ran against MIBR a couple of times towards mid, which got them kills on occasion. I like that Fnatic seem to be throwing in a couple of these sorts of plays as well. I think on Overpass, they had a couple of rounds where they three-man naded barrels, for example. And it's always yes. nice to throw those plays in. Like, when you get a free kill just from three nades, it feels so good. I really don't feel like we see enough of that, even though we've been seeing much more of it. But, I mean, on this map, on both the plants, uh, both A and B, right, they're pretty much always default plants. And we have seen teams save grenades for the planting scenario, but... It seems like it sort of comes and goes, and I don't know, I think there are many maps where you could you could borrow that logic and, and do it, and that would be really interesting. The M4 does a little bit here, but JW is out running and hunting, and he's going to find a second kill in the round. Meanwhile, over at the A-bomb side, Yakinda is the only thing between Fnatic and a bomb plant, and he's now suddenly getting flanked, I think. Oh, he actually checks that. What a play, and they know where Buster is. He got that kill earlier, so... This is just an incredible round out of JW and the confidence. You mentioned it earlier when he's feeling it and is really sort of, um, you know, not afraid to go take the fights. He's so scary. His turnaround in form, I think, has been probably the most impressive thing for Fnatic throughout these last months. I, I, just in terms of how he's gone back to the orb, he's started to become one of the best players on the team again. I was looking at his stats this tournament. They're just so much better than they have been in the last three months. I mean, for example, on the T side in the last three months, he's winning 41% of his opening fights on average. At this tournament, he's winning 71% of his early fights on the T oh, side. That is huge if you can get picks like that all the time. Oh. And this time, it's Golden who gets it. And that was... It was... It was the debris from the HE, along with the slow down, James could not get away. What a devastating way to start the 25th round, which might be one of the last ones they have here. JW does go down, it's a bit of a nice return. Sanji able to pick up the kill, but this mid portion of the map, Fnatic have really been exploiting it a lot, and it's really cool to see. Nice find from Kicker, though, taking down Broland. Back into a 4 on 3. Fnatic, you know, maybe put on a little bit of a cooldown here. Golden going back down the ladder. Ooh, he actually faked that noise, it looked like. Kicker will have absolutely heard that on the other side of the wall. Flasher has now joined Crims towards A ramp. In terms of utility, Fnatic don't have much, so I assume it is mainly going to be a contact play, just coming down to taking fights, and Golden is in form right now. Finally, he gets shut down, but that little fake towards mid could do enough to give VP something to think about. The issue for Fnatic is Yakinda is still playing that mid position, but he can quickly rotate over to A. So as soon as Kicker gets the information, VP can react quickly. And there's only one smoke for Fnatic, so they have to they have to try and get that bomb down the first time and just go straight for it. If they get slowed down too much, that's going to be a big issue no matter what here. Flusher, looking at the angle, they're checking everything. There's the smoke, but it's going to go really deep. So Kicker can still have the advantage. Oh, and then he's going to be waiting very patiently. Now fighting is Crims, but more people are already showing up. Nine seconds on the clock, and yeah, that's not going to work out for them. So VP putting off the loss a little bit here. 15 to 10, 26 round is coming up. Fnatic can still buy, but I don't know. I mean, overtime is definitely possible. That's really well played by Kicker as well. Normally, people don't like playing that position because it's quite common that that spot is molotov But I think he realized Fnatic used a lot of their nades already. And there was a chance that Fnatic didn't want to give away that they were pushing that A site. So they just go for the contact push. And that means Kicker can hold just a, a complete off angle on that position. One that Flusher was never going to clear. 
Flash is in for Buster. Golden is on the other side of this. He's taken some nade damage. He still wants this kill, but Buster gets it from above. Elsewhere, though, Brolan's got an opening of his own. So it's a 4v4, even trades early, and Fnatic have got themselves this ramp control. Okay, they don't want to rush up behind it, but you're right. They had managed to trade it. Very fortunate for them. Not going to find anyone in that corner. Three people are starting to stack up on the CT side. They're getting closer to that defense right now. Sanji, kick it, and also James here with that AWP. So let's just see. Still plenty of time left. They're actually going to try and go for it. And again, the flashbangs just give it away. They knew when they heard those on the ramp exactly what kind of a push was coming in behind. So that's a little bit of a mistake, perhaps, or at least committing that far into it. Still 55 seconds for a two on three. And they're running back, but they can fake it. I mean, obviously, VP can hear this, and Fnatic must know that. They're still going for it, so no fakes. All right. Yeah, they've got the nades. They're confident they can take the site, and I think they're probably right in that assessment. Buster's just now arriving towards the site itself. Flusher gets the spray he needed. It's all on Jame, and it's not looking good for him. He gets the first kill onto Crims. Almost good for the second, but he misses his chance, and now Fnatic have the smoke up. They can play safe. They can play the time. It's Jame who has to come to them, but Jame's about to get the fight. It's into a 1v1. Broan, the man on the other side, has 29 kills in this game. He needs the 30th to win this one for his team, but Jame is taking a lot of time to get to the site. The smoke about to be put down. Oh no, it bounces back. That's not going to cover the bomb. Brolan can continue to play this one and Brolan wins it. 16-10 and that smoke bouncing back makes all the difference, Anders. <laughs> I can't believe it. Out of all of the ways that he could have potentially lost that Hawker, that's that's how it goes. I, he should have been dead beforehand. Surely it looked like he was already in a you know in a position that that should have never been even close. But wow, thirty kills on Brolan, and the first map goes to Fnatic. That's a, that's a devastating way to lose it, isn't it? I, I can't. What did that smoke even bounce off, man? Like the lip of know. the wood that was going up there. <laughs> Why is that a thing? That's amazing. Um, haven't seen that before. Hope to never see it again because that's, <laughs> I don't know, that made a little bit of a difference, but he should he should be dead no matter what there. So I think even without it, you know, probably still going to be quite a quite a difficult game to uh, to win there. Well, scoreboard here, yeah, 30 and 11 for Brolan and JW not that far behind. I mean, I just, I think the, the fact that Brolan and JW led the charge just meant that you could tell Golden and Crim started playing way better. Like it almost paved the way for the rest of them to join in. And on the other side, it's it's not it's not that I mind that Buster's playing well, but I'm looking for that Yakindar and Jame combo to be the main punch for for VP, and it kind of wasn't the way that I was expecting. Yeah, for sure. I, I think you've got to be looking at Yakindar and Jame to be the best two players on VP normally in their wins. I also want to say that Flusher somehow managed to get a, a zero percent headshot percentage in that game. Like, I know he only really? got eight kills, but not getting a single headshot is kind of impressive. Like, was he purposely going for that? Who knows? It's, you know, I won't rule it out. It is Flusher after <laughs> all. He does he does live in a different world from the rest of us. So, you know, it's it's it's, it's a, definitely an, a, a possibility. Uh, second map would be overpass. So um, that's interesting. That's going to be coming up next. And I very much look forward to seeing that. I think Fnatic are looking uh, very, very good at the moment. Any last thoughts, Hawker? No, I'm, just, I'm excited to see if VP can bounce back. This is the, the biggest game they've played, let's be real. The winner of this game yes. gets a minimum of a $250,000 prize pool. That is absurd for these guys, so they've got to make sure they can bounce back here. Yeah, well, they're going to have at least one more chance to do it. It's going to be an overpass coming up after the break, so stay tuned.